Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I took this image a few years ago. As you could see, it's horrible. It's blurry. It's overexposed. It's all washed out. But thankfully, the technology available today has caught up to this image and I was able to fix it. And I came up with this. And in this video, I'm going to go over all the steps and the plugins I used to make this image become this. This is a photo I took a few years ago of Dasa and her baby Otis. They're at the Erie Zoo in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I had a few things working against me when I was taking this image. Uh, first of all, they're in an enclosure that has a skylight on it. And it was very sunny out that day. And the sun was coming through that skylight and draping across the front of the glass I was shooting through. And it caused this really low contrast, um, kind of washed out look. Also... The glass was very thick, and with that light going across it, it was very hard to get tight focus. And you can see it's very, very blurry as well. Also, I made a mistake. I use spot metering almost exclusively. And whenever I am taking images of animals that have dark fur, what I usually do is add some exposure compensation, positive exposure compensation, because uh, when you're metering off dark fur, your camera's going to try to make that medium gray. And it will overexpose the shot like this shot is. And for some reason, I, I neglected to add, I would have added a stop of exposure, of positive exposure compensation. I forgot to do that. So it's overexposed, it's blurry, and it's all washed out. But thankfully, I didn't delete it. I kept it these few years, and the technology has caught up with this image, and I'm able to fix it. I'm going to tell you in excruciating detail everything I need to do to fix this image. Now it is an unedited RAW file and I'm in Lightroom. I shot it at an ISO of 1600 and if I zoom in you can see there's quite a bit of noise. I like to remove noise very early in my workflow especially when I use third-party applications. I'm going to use Topaz Labs to noise AI. Um, the reason is those applications work best on an image that doesn't have a lot of contrast added to it. it have a lot of the whites and blacks and Shadows and highlights adjusted, a lot of, of saturation added to it. So if you could send a RAW file immediately into those apps, they'll work best. But there are a couple um, adjustments that work better on a RAW file. So I want to do those first in Lightroom before I do send it off into Topaz Labs to Noise AI. First of all, white balance. White balance works best on a RAW file. It doesn't work as well on a TIFF or PSD or JPEG. But... I don't gotta do it. The white balance is okay on this image. The other thing are profiles. Profiles in general work better on a RAW file. Also, there's camera specific profiles that only work on the manufacturer RAW file. They're only included in the manufacturer RAW file. So as soon as you convert that manufacturer RAW file into a TIFF or JPEG, you lose that camera specific um, profile you might've wanted to use. In this case, I don't have to do it. So really I could send the RAW file it is, is, is but there is still something I'm gonna do. I'm going to go to, um, not effects, I'm going to go to detail. Any default sharpening that Lightroom added, I remove it. Uh, because I don't want, when you sharpen an image, you're enhancing the noise, and then it's harder to get rid of the noise. So I'm going to get rid of that. Also, I don't want to add any of Lightroom's luminance noise reduction, so I'll keep that at zero. I found that uh, Lightroom's color noise reduction works pretty well, so I'll leave that at its default value of 25. So really, this is a raw file, and the only thing I've done to it is I've taken sharpening all the way down to zero. And I'm going to send it to Denoise AI. I'm going to right-click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and go over to Topaz Denoise AI. Now, because this is a raw file, although Denoise AI does work on raw files, when you use it as a Lightroom plugin, it does not work on raw files. Then it has to work on a TIFF file. So it's going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments with those specs and click Edit. And then it will take it and it will open it up into Denoise AI. Now, one thing I want to add, it's full resolution. I did not crop it. I found that all these third-party noise reduction applications work best when you send a full resolution image to it. If you start to crop it, it seems they seem to have a harder time getting rid of the noise. They work best when they have a lot of pixels to work with. So that's why 
I didn't crop it yet. I'm sending the entire full resolution image. Now, what I'm going to do is I have five different AI models, but because this isn't a raw file, um, I only have four available on this image. What I like to do to get an apples to apples comparison to see which one is best, I have them all set to auto. And then post-processing, I have similar settings here, 10 and 25 for recover original detail, color noise reduction. That's just the way I do it. And then I'll look through them and see which one I feel is the best of these four. And as I go through, um, it just looks standard and clear look pretty much identical to me. Uh, they're, they're both, and they're both better than low light and severe noise. Now, if I did feel the need, let's say I decide to use standard, if I did feel the need to tweak it, I would tweak it at this point. Um, or if I use clear, I would tweak it. But I think it's fine out of the box. They look identical. I'm just going to go with clear and I'm going to click apply. So I got rid of the noise. I just do that again very early in my workflow to get rid of the noise. So that is one problem taken care of. The other two problems, it's blurry and it's very low contrast. It's like hazy, right? So we need to do, I'm gonna deal with that next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the basic tab and you may be tempted to just go to the dehaze slider and move that to the right and look at it, it does get rid of the haze nicely, but what it's doing, it's really adding a lot of saturation and Dasa does not look like that. She's not, her fur isn't that saturated. And I, whenever I do wildlife images, or in this case, zoo images, or even if I'm taking images of my cats or dog, I don't like to misrepresent what they look like. Uh, so I won't do that, but I will go up to contrast. Contrast is like a lightweight version of dehaze. If I move it to the right, you can see, yeah, it did a pretty good job. So it got rid of some of the height haze, but the image is still overexposed. I could come in, let's see exposure, bring down exposure a little. Now it's kind of making her, as I'm getting the background and foreground better exposed, I'm really affecting her adversely. So I'll go to shadows and open up shadows on her a little bit. It looks pretty good. Let's play around with the highlights, bring those down a little bit and bring it in a little more detail. See when I move it, see this part in the foreground? That's what I'm looking at. There's that zero. If I start pulling it down, you can see how it's bringing in some more detail in that foreground area. That's all I want to do. So I'm, I'm basically doing my uh, tone adjustments now. That's getting rid of that haze and, you know, making the image look a little bit more normal. Like I, um, I nailed exposure when I actually didn't. All right. So I did that. I'm again, I'm not going to add any texture clarity dehaze. Of course, I'm not adding any of that vibrant saturation. Uh, because as far as sharpening is concerned, I want to use uh, Topaz Lab's sh uh, Sharpen AI to do that. And you can see it's really blurry. So at this point, I'm going to send it to Sharpen AI. I'm still not cropping it, all right? So I'm going to send it to Sharpen AI. So I'm going to right-click on it, go down to Edit In, and then down to Topaz Sharpen AI. Now, because I did editing in Lightroom, I have to send a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. So I'm going to have three versions in this image. I'm going to have the original RAW file. I'm going to have a TIFF file that has the noise removed and some adjustments do, done to it, mainly tone adjustments. And then I'm going to have this third version of the image that is going to be hopefully sharp. So I'm going to again use these default settings and click on edit. Now Denoise AI has a multi-panel view simpler, or Sharpen AI has a multi-panel view. Uh, similar to Denoise AI, and I like to be in that to begin with. So I'll go to the, it's called Comparison View. And I'll go there. Now there's three different image quality modes, Motion Blur, Out of Focus, and Two Soft Mode. And then there's some soft, or there's some sub modes under those settings, or some sub settings. Um, what I do, again, I like to try to get an apples to apples comparison. So I'll have those on auto if possible. Now I'm going to go to the Motion Blur mode. You can see that's set to auto and see what that looks like once it renders or updates. It takes a while. Um, what I found is that um, Sharpen AI is relatively slow compared to Denoise AI. And you can see it sharpened it real a lot, like maybe too much, but it, it really did a nice job. Now we'll wait for uh, the out of focus image quality model to render and see what that one looks like. And um, this last one isn't on auto. So let me put that on auto. Was this one on auto? Oh, that one wasn't on auto either. So again, I like to do an apples to apples comparison. So they're all on auto to see what they look like. 
that one. And now this one is updated. Now with them all on auto, um, the motion blur image quality model is definitely sharpest. It might be a little too sharp, but let me just move this and just take another look like at other parts of the image like that. And again, I'm sorry, it has to render. It's gonna take a little while. But what I wanna do is because there's very shallow depth of field here uh, as shot. Her face should be in focus. The baby's hand should be in focus. So it's fixing that nicely, but it's also trying to make the baby's head in focus. And you can see how that looks funky. So I really have to use masking here. I have to mask in sharpness on her face, the baby's hands, maybe the shoulders of, uh, of Dasa so that you know, that's the plane in focus, but then I don't want the other parts of the image to have any sharpening applied to, or maybe just a little sharpening applied to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the motion blur image quality model with auto settings. And then I'm going to go down here and click on this little icon right here for mask. Now you could see that um, the, the adjustments have been removed. There's no sharpening done at all. Because when you do this by default, you're going to be in what's called add mode. If you look down here in the lower left hand side, you can see add. So I'm going to add sharpening to basically her face. Now we have some brush attributes. The radius of the brush is right here. You can make it bigger or smaller. Also the bracket keys, left bracket key smaller, right bracket key larger. The softness of the brush, I keep that at 50. The opacity of the brush. You know what? I'm going to take opacity because I think it was just a little too sharp, don't you think? when I did it. So I'm going to take the opacity down to 80. Okay. And then I'm going to add it to her face. Now you'll see as I'm doing that, I'm getting a red overlay that's telling me where I'm painting. Okay. So I want to just add it to the face, add it to the baby's hand over there, to her shoulder, because that all should be in focus. This area over here should all probably all be in focus like that. Let's see what that looks like. All right. That actually looks pretty good. Now, the rest of the image from the baby's head forward should probably be in just a little bit more focus, but not a lot, not comparable to like her face. So what I'm going to do is now go to opacity and bring that down considerably to maybe, let's say 50. Now, what you want to do when you're using a brush with a opacity less than 100, you want to be careful you don't click paint let go of the left mouse button and click and paint over that same area again because it is cumulative. So if you're uh, painting at a 50% opacity, you'll get 50% on one pass. Then on the second pass, you'd get 75%. Then on the third pass, you get 87.5%. So you're always going to be adding 50%. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that we're just adding, in this case, 50% basically everywhere else on the bodies of the, the two great apes. Okay, that looks okay. All right, I think that's pretty good. So we'll go with that. I'm going to apply mask. I'm going to go over here and click on apply mask. And then we're still in this comparison view. Um, what I could do is go to the single view. It's going to take a while to render maybe. Um, if it's not rendering too, just click on it and it will render. And um, once it does render, I'll just take a final look at it. If I wasn't happy with the masking I did to it, I could just go down and click on that mask again and go back in and try to fix anything. So this is going to take a while, probably. We could talk about something or I could pause the video, but I don't. It's only going to be probably about 10, 15 seconds. So let that do its thing. So hopefully you understood the steps so far, what I'm doing. Now, once this is done and I'm happy with it and I get back into Lightroom, I'll do cropping probably almost right away and then do the rest of my editing. All right. I'd say that looks all right. I think um, I moved it accidentally. Um, oh, no, I didn't. Uh, her face might be over sharpened because I'm doing the video and I'm talking and I'm not being real careful. I probably open sharp, over sharpened her face. So I probably would go back into the masking and take away a little of the sharpness on her face. But I'm not going to do it, hopefully, you, you know, because we have time. I don't want you to be watching this for hours. We'll click Apply. So, um, you know, so just understand, I think her face might be a little bit over sharpened. Now, this will take a little while to do. And what I'll do, I will pause the video in this part. And when we come back, you'll be in Lightroom or we'll be in Lightroom and we'll finish our processing up on this image. 
Okay, we're back in Lightroom. This is our sharpened image. Now, it actually doesn't look too bad once we got in Lightroom. Uh, here was our blurry image that we did remove noise from and did some tone adjustments. And here is our raw file. Now, we'll go back to our sharpened image. I'm going to finish up the processing. I'm going to crop it right away. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to tighten it up onto uh, DASA here. I want the rule of thirds line to be right on her eye and I don't it would be nice if I could put it right there but I think she's too far left and too much of that rock so I'll just center it and have that rule of thirds line right on her eye I think that looks pretty good so we'll close down the crop tool now the background to me is just a little bit too bright and we have this great new masking options in Lightroom so I'm going to click on that I'm going to select the subject and you could see it did a great job it selected DASA but I don't want to adjust DASA, I want to adjust the background. I want to make the background a little darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to where it says subject and click on those three dots and click invert. And now you'll see everything but DASA is is, uh, overlay, has an overlay on it. That means my adjustments will affect those areas. Now I don't want to affect the rock in front of her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from this um, mask. So we'll go to subtract and we'll get a brush. Okay, we'll get a brush, we'll get a right bracket key makes it larger. There's also brush attributes here. I'm going to use a hard brush because I'm going to come in and just kind of get it right along the edge of this, this rock here. And then I could come in, get a larger brush. And just take it away from this rock in the foreground because I don't want my adjustments to affect this rock at all. Just like that. Okay, good. Now, so we just have basically the background um, selected and we'll go to the exposure slider. We'll just bring, make it a little darker like that. And maybe I'll take a little saturation out of it as well. So it's not quite as saturated and um, pretty good actually. Let me do one more thing. I'm gonna um, get another mask and we're gonna select the subject again. All right, so I selected her and just let me see. I wanna see if I just brighten her up just a touch. And just bring the shadows then down and the yeah i think that that looks kind of cool just like that and i think we'll finish it off we'll close down our masking and we'll go to effects and we'll add a darker vignette just like that so that's our finished product we went from this raw file to this and i think it looks pretty good i probably still have her maybe her face a little bit too sharp but um you know for doing a video and trying to talk and not sound like a fool i think i did okay thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>